And Craig, is the worst over for us here in South Florida? The Keys, Miami Dade, Broward? So the worst is over, but the winds and the gusts are not over. It's not going to get worse than it was in the middle of the day today, but it's not going to get totally better for still some time because what's going on is the storm is still relatively close and it's a very, very big storm. And, and this is just one radar's perspective here. Let me, and let me just do this real quickly because it'll give you a better perspective of how big the storm is when I turn on all the radars and zoom out here because we're missing the top half of it there. And and we're missing there. So, so it's the, the radar presentation of the storm covers the entire state. Basically, from Jacksonville to Key West is under the influence of the strong circulation, and then that extends even uh, farther out than that. Now, let's zoom in and I'll talk about uh, what's going on here in South Florida because. Uh, because it's still windy and we're still getting these showers and these showers are moving right along and what happens is is that uh, near the surface there's roughness of the ground and buildings and trees and the terrain and things like that and we call that a frictional effect so the winds near the ground go a little bit slower and the winds just above the ground on a big circulation like this uh, they're much much faster they're not uh, um, encumbered by anything so those winds are zipping along and these little showers here because the raindrops are falling down it takes some of that energy from the wind that's just above the ground and drags it down to the ground with it and then we get those wind gusts so uh, that's one of the reasons we're having stronger wind gusts still in the area right now i was hoping that by the time uh, it got farther to the north it's near fort myers right now irma is that we would see more improvement in broward and, uh, and more improving in Miami-Dade, but these little showers that have developed now, and just because the circulation is so big and so strong, we're still seeing some wind gusts. Let me put up, uh, speaking of some wind gusts, let me put them up and uh, clear an error here, and we'll move forward with this graphic. If the error will clear, well, it's not, in that. oh, there it is. Okay, so uh, there is uh, the Broward sites there, and the temperature's in the upper 70s, but the uh, wind's still blowing pretty good. Hallandale Beach, 35, uh, Plantation, 21, 38 in Lauder Hill, and 20 in Pembroke Pine. So <clears throat> some areas uh, blowing uh, over 30 miles an hour, close to tropical storm force strength, but then we're still seeing gusts on top of that, and that's in Broward. Miami-Dade, the winds are a little bit less. We don't have anything over 30. We've got a 30 at Cutler Bay, uh, Miami Gardens, 19. 30 in Coconut Grove and 20 in West Miami, just to, to pick a few sites off the uh, out of the network there. And, and you, we can see that Miami-Dade, the winds are in fact lower than in Broward, but the winds in Broward are lower than they were, say, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock this afternoon. So the trend, I know everybody would like the winds to just shut off, just stop. But it's, it's a big storm. It's moving away. It's not coming back, and except for dealing with these gusts that are coming through from time to time, uh, it, we're, we're headed towards improvement. Now, there's this band out here, and this is the band that's the, in this case, the primary feeder band. It goes all the way up and around the top of the storm and uh, is feeding moisture into it. It almost just spirals in. They, they've called spiral bands, feeder bands, whatever. But it is just to our east. And because the storm is not moving west, and we've seen it when a storm moves west, this feature tracks with it and comes back over us. Uh, the storm is moving more northward. So this band is forecast to stay offshore. Now, if it does come onshore, uh, we'll let you know. Uh, overnight, we're going to keep our coverage going. And uh, I have Dave Warren here. And so Dave Warren will be watching this very closely. And if this band comes back, uh, we'll be on the air to let you know that the rain's increasing, or here comes some very strong winds in the squalls but they're not going to be as strong as we saw this afternoon. So what we went through this afternoon is not going to happen again. Now, these little showers here, they're going to continue. They're not a flood maker, so we're not too worried about those as we go on in time. Uh, let's check out the latest advisory. It's the 8 o'clock advisory. It's an intermediate advisory. So the wind and the numbers all there, they're updated. The speed is almost due north at 14. And as long as it's moving that kind of almost due north direction, uh, that spiral band to our east is not coming back our way. There's going to be a little bit of a westward shift, but in the big scheme of things, I don't think that's going to bring that spiral band back. Category 2 winds 105 miles an hour, and it's 15 miles to the east northeast of Fort Myers. Now, as we go into time here forward, 
uh, we can see that the red area, and if you're on radio you can't see it, but the red area covers much of the southwest part of the state near Fort Myers. That's the hurricane force winds. It's forecast to be in the Tampa area, uh, extending as far east as Orlando and uh, as far north as, say, Ocala and as far south as Sarasota. That's at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. In South Florida, the winds are continuing to slowly, slowly decrease. Now, this is where Tampa is uh, going to see their first significant, and I can't say major anymore because the forecast is not for Category 3 or greater, but significant hurricane. So, so what happened that we went to, you know what, I can't do it that way, let me do it this way. So what happened that we had an earlier forecast advisory that called for a Category 4 up here in the Tampa Bay area, and now the forecast is for Category 1 there in the Tampa Bay area. Well, the storm made a little bit of a shift to the right. It made landfall near Marco Island and is now over land as it's moving. And the longer the storms over land, the, uh, the intensity process, the process continues to decrease. So, and then we also call it decaying. So while the center is over land, the storm cannot strengthen. It slowly weakens. There are exceptions, of course, to this and everything, but uh, the storm slowly weakens as it's moving to the north there. So category two now, category one in the Tampa Bay area, but Tampa Bay hasn't had a category one in a very long time, and they haven't had a major hurricane since 1921. So even though we are, have gone from category four to category one, because it's been so long since a big wind event has occurred in the Tampa Bay area and because it's been so long since even a big wind circulation has occurred in the Tampa Bay area, I think there's still going to be a lot of power outages. They will see something similar, if not a little bit stronger than what we saw today in South Florida. And the construction does not have as high of a building code there. There are a lot of old homes. There are a lot of trailer uh, mobile homes. And uh, so I think there's going to be long-term power outages. And I don't know that many of the people, I think now they're starting to, to grasp the concept that this storm is coming. We're thankful that it's not going to be a four, thank goodness. And uh, it's going to be bad tonight, and it's going to be dark, and it's going to be scary, and the power is already out in parts of the area. But I think they don't think about the after part of the storm which we're going to start dealing with now that it's we're past the storm. And that is going to be days, if not weeks, of power outages due to widespread tree damage and line damage and power line damage <clears throat> across the area. Now, the other thing about the, uh, this being a Tampa event is the potential for storm surge because the wind is still circulating around the hurricane like that which means that it's going from east to west. So basically Ocala, Orlando, Gainesville, that wind is blowing towards the Gulf of Mexico and that's pushing the water out. And it's pushing it out so much that here is the latest uh, tidal gauge from St. Petersburg. And so Tampa Bay starting uh, this morning, started, or overnight last night, started dumping out and the values went down, 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 down. And so the water is basically two feet below the normal low tide in the Tampa Bay area. And it's sitting there and it's waiting for the hurricane. And once the hurricane passes, then the winds shift around to an onshore flow, which is west to east in this case. And that water that's been waiting to come back in is no longer being held back. The wind now is even helping to blow it back into the bay. And this water is going to come rushing in somewhat similar to a tsunami fashion, not a wall of water, but just waves and waves and kind of just a rushing, a rushing river of water coming back into Tampa Bay. And so the fear there is that there is going to be a significant storm surge. In fact, the, the forecast is still for five to eight feet, and that would put many parts of Tampa Bay, which is very, very flat around the bay and has communities underwater. The east part of the bay, Apollo Beach, is especially vulnerable. The north part of the bay in some very nice uh, areas around uh, Tampa is vulnerable, and even up uh, the Hillsborough River, which is in the Tampa area, is vulnerable. So it's that whole thing, once again, uh, we're feeling better, but somebody else isn't feeling as good, as, as good with this, uh, Rick and Ruta Bay. And so that's, that's something that um, we have to keep in mind what they're going to be going through. And they're probably going to have a harder time with it just because in many ways we're a little more experienced with it.